Hello, my name is Jeff Stevens and welcome back to the Cult Game Devlog. Uh, today, I have a quick video for you where I'll be talking about how I put graphics and sound into my text-based C++ game. It doesn't have an engine and runs just like any other normal console app in C++ does. And uh, as you C++ programmers are well aware, uh, you don't have many native libraries or built-in functionality for C++. You gotta add everything manually. You have to specifically ask the compiler for every little bit of functionality you wanna use in your programs. And that includes graphics and audio. Uh, when I first started out with C++, I wanted to use graphics and audio. I didn't know what to do. And uh, now that I'm more experienced, I figured out what I can do. I'm, this video is for those of you who are newer and want to know uh, how you can do this sort of thing, what avenues you have. So, uh, let's get to the task of that. There are a lot of answers and questions uh, in this debate online about what tools, libraries, and frameworks you should be using to make an application with graphics or sound, but I'll forego talking about these for the sake of time. Uh, just understand that there's a lot of nuance and a lot of different use cases to each method. It's a, it's a big discussion. There's you, you can do your research, but this is gonna this video will boil it down for you. So, in my game, Cult Game, I am using the Curses library to manage my text-based graphics and the SDL and SDL Mixer libraries to manage sound. So, starting with graphics, without any fancy libraries, you can print to the terminal and actually make a text-based game entirely this way, or text-based application, whatever you would want. It's very old school, but you can do it just by sending data to the standard out stream. Uh, and I have, I'm gonna show you right here, this little umbrella fencing game I made a while back. And uh, yeah, entirely made just by printing to the console. Uh, however, the Curses C++ library makes this a lot easier and feature rich. And you might have seen a lot of, uh, well, not sure if you've seen a lot, but you might have seen some applications or games that look like this. Uh, and they're made with curses a lot of the time. Curses is a library that lets you print to any location on the screen, on, on this little terminal window, lets you change text that has already been printed, print over old text. You can clear the screen, you can accept input without needing to press enter, and that's a huge one. And then lastly, you can color and style text very easily. All right, so first I can treat the screen as a grid of characters, almost like pixels on a screen in this little terminal window, printing and reprinting to any location on my terminal screen, which wasn't just possible before with just printing to the standard out stream with the uh, C out function calls in, in that stream. Uh, okay. So the screen clearing feature too is also a lot nicer than you might think. Previously, I printed a lot of new lines just to fake a screen clear. Faking screen clearing this way was serviceable, but printing a bunch of new lines will constantly make your terminal scroll down, which will cause stuttering. Curse's screen clearing feature clears the screen without any stuttering and will actually make it possible to create clean animations, which is pretty cool. You can sort of see, I'm gonna show you a little video here of what people are doing with that. All right. Accepting input without needing to press enter is a huge feature as well. You can make your applications feel a lot more responsive and user-friendly by not forcing users to press enter every time they want to do something. And this makes Curses a perfect library to use for making games or software in the terminal that uses arrow keys for movement. All right. The last noteworthy feature that Curses has that I want to share with you is its text styling abilities. So before I used Curses, I used something called ANSI codes to add color and text decorations and to change the text I printed to my screen. It worked fine uh, using cur uh, outside of Curses, but while using Curses, you have to use Curses' own styling functions and capabilities. Curses lets you color and style text uh, not through ANSI codes, but easily by calling uh, functions to change the color and style of text before it is printed. You don't need to handle any of the ANSI encoding here. And one caveat though, is that Curse's uh, text styling capabilities are very limited by your specific ter terminal on which you run your application. As uh, once I learned, once I started using Curses, different terminals have, and there's tons of different terminals, have different color schemes and capabilities that they're able to display. So Curses will uh, make you take uh, 
take charge of that and understand what you're working with before all the colors are be able to be, be printed. All right, and uh, curses, it's all free to use too. It takes a little while to read the documentation and to find support for it because it's a library that's decades old, but it's the de facto tool, in my opinion, for making text-based console interfaces in C++. I'll link some tutorials and helpful resources I used in the description to get you started using curses. Uh, and also, I'll do some of the work uh, for you. Uh, I'm going to be releasing a, a library uh, that I made during my own work time with Curses that uh, solved a lot of problems with the Curses library that I had personally and added a lot of improvements for quality of life. And it's a library I made called Stevens Terminal. It has uh, non-Curses functions as well, but I intend to release it as an open source library and uh, updates to come on that uh, when I feel like it's ready for public consumption, but it does need a lot of work. Okay, so for graphics. Now, if you'd like to use a more traditional 2D graphics in your application, the SDL library actually allows you to manage graphics as well as sound. Uh, personally, I have not used SDL for graphics, but I know it can do uh, graphics, and I'll link some reference materials and tutorials uh, in the description for those interested in using that. But uh, today we're going to be talking mainly about the sound capabilities of SDL and its extension SDL Mixer. Uh, and I would recommend that 100% for anyone just running a little console app. SDL Mixer is a sound extension to SDL that allows you to play sound from your console application by loading audio files into mixed chunk objects and passing them as parameters to SDL Mixer functions. If that sounds complicated, it's not. I have a tutorial for you. It has some basic features that uh, allows you to play music control volume and uh, add some very basic effects, but it's really nothing too advanced. This is perfectly fine for my needs. I followed a great tutorial from a site called Lazy Food Productions, definitely going to link that, and not too long after my game had sound playing. A tip for those of you who decide to use STL Mixer, and you may want you may want to consider learning uh, in something in C++ called threads, or uh, um, splitting processes or forking. That is uh, something that, uh, if, for those of you who are newer, it's something that you probably should be reading up on. Uh, if you're experienced, you probably know something about that already. Uh, but if you use uh, threads or you split your processes, you can let SDL mixtures run on a separate thread from your main application and have music run in the background or sound in the background. Uh, so yeah, um, I'll link up some information in the description about that too, don't worry. Uh, and just like I'm making a uh, open source library for Curse's terminal functions, uh, I'm going to be making an open source library to allow ease of use with SDL Mixer. And uh, the open source library I made is called Steven Sound. It's, uh, again, not ready for the public, but uh, I'm, I solved a lot of problems with managing playlists of music and playing sound in one line and managing the audio that I'd had loaded into my program. So um, uh, that solved several problems, and I really think that you guys might find a use for that. Again, more on that in the future. So these are some of the tools that I've been really digging deep with to get the graphics and sound occult game working. And I hope to have some more game-oriented content soon, uh, but getting this up and running with a solid tech stack is really important to make development have, it, have as few hurdles as possible. Uh, I don't want to jinx myself, but uh, after I get my uh, tech stack working where I can print text to the terminal and style it in any way I want with no errors and have a have a process working where on one end all I have to do is put what I want and then all the stuff that I've, that I've already written uh, will just do all the rest of the work. I feel like it's going to go a lot faster. So uh, yeah, you saw some minor footage today of what it looks like, but uh, uh, definitely uh, and, and also what it looks like using curses and uh, but more on that later as as always uh thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one hopefully you got a lot out of this make sure to like comment subscribe uh yeah bye bye <laughs>